praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So good to see you today. Uh, what caused you to want to stop on this message? There is a leader in you. Do you feel or believe that there's a leader in you that is waiting to come out? Maybe you need just a little bit more information. Maybe you just need to uh, add to what you already know or believe a leader should be. Well, I'm hoping in today's message, you're going to be able to get some, let's just say some uh, information that can help you go to the next level. Because uh, I truly do believe that none of us are an accident or a mistake. I believe that we are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose and understand that God's purpose and will for your life is always better than what you can come up with for yourself. So my question to you today is why did you stop believing in yourself? Some of you started, some of you thought about, you know, <laughs> stepping out there and doing that, that something, whether it was a business or going back to school or just doing that something that can, let's just say, add to your life, add to you as an individual, as a man, woman of God. As a matter of fact, just as a person, because I'm, I'm not going to assume that everybody's watching this video was a Christian. What caused you to doubt yourself? What caused you to, to allow those false thoughts and that fear to rise up in you and to keep you from doing what you, you know, felt you were supposed to do. Because each and every one of us, you know, we have our thoughts, our dreams, uh, we're able to, I'm not going to say fantasize in our, in our minds, but, you know, we can draw these images and pictures in our mind of seeing ourselves doing that something that would, you know, let's just say elevate us to a better place. So why are you telling yourself you're not good enough? Are you telling yourself you're not good enough, not smart enough? We can come up with all kinds of excuses as to why we're not doing what we should be, could be doing, but I'm here to tell you today, you are well able to do what God has called you to do. You are well able to do what you might be feeling in your spirit, might be carrying in your heart, that dream, you know, that's something, that's something that is gnawing at you. I'm here to tell you today that you're well able to do it. See, that, see you know, we can sometimes suppress you know, those, those leadership qualities or abilities within us because of the mere fact that we're giving place to doubt, to fear, to worry, double-mindedness. Matter of fact, the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. You, you can't afford to be double-minded. Now, we can have doubts and reservations about things, but the real deal is, you know, it comes a time when you're just going to have to be able to step out in faith and do what you believe, what you know is the right thing to do. What's the right thing to do? You want to be the best version of yourself. And anything that you're going to allow to hinder that, to stop that, to keep you from becoming that, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. You have to be able to see yourself as a leader. You have to be able to see yourself as a leader. You know, it's one thing for me to tell you that you're a leader, but you have to be able to believe in yourself and see that. And not place yourself in a position where you're, let's just say, uh, in, uh, placing limitations upon yourself. You don't want to impose or place limitations upon yourself that's going to keep you from becoming mm, established in that something you know you're able to do. See, I, I would dare say many in the body of Christ have conditioned themselves to live a less than life. See, because you're not going to really live that quality of life or be that, that let's just say, that man, woman of God that you really want to be until you're really operating in that vision. 
you know, where there is no vision, people perish. So understand your life is so, so very important. And when I say that, it's because other people's lives are going to be influenced by the choices and decisions that you make as you travel down this highway called life. Yes, all of us are on our own journey. All of us are trying to get to a place where we can see greater, able to see more. Oof, Lord Jesus, understand, understand. You know, until we can fully embrace God's love and His message of salvation. Oh, something about that Word of God that will inspire you and let you know that, man, whew, I can do this. Sister girl, you can do this. Understand, this is your season. This is your season to go to the next level. Whether it's a prayer line, whether it's a ministry in a in a nursing home or, or going to the hospital or maybe as a young man, you know, you or, or as, as a man of God, let me put it like that. You might want to go to the prison uh, and, and minister to the inmates or or go to a rehab program and, and bring a word of encouragement to inspire and to help someone get through a process. Or maybe there's just someone up the street around the corner that you can talk to. And that you can uh, just lend an ear or, or just lay an arm around the shoulder and just to encourage and or extend your hand to pick somebody else up. It's not all about us. You got to be able to see past yourself and realize there's a lot of hurting people out here today. And if we ever doubted that, all you have to do is look at your news every day. And I'm sure it'll tell you, boy, there's a lot of hurting people out here today. Not just because of the pandemic, and that has really devastated not just our, our nation, but the world. I mean, this pandemic has hit and has impacted the world. But there were even things going on even before that. And there's going to be things going on after this pandemic gets behind us. But let me give you a verse. My opening verse of scripture is coming from 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at the third verse. A little wordy. But uh, here's what it says. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who have called us to glory and virtue, whereby we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of God's divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, into virtue, knowledge, into knowledge, temperance, into temperance, patience, into patience, godliness, into godliness, brotherly kindness, into brotherly kindness, charity, and we know charity to be love, love, love covers a multitude of sins. But let me go to this eighth verse. Because here's what the 8th verse says. For if these things be in you, all of the above has to be in you. Talking about faith, virtue, knowledge, patience, temperance, godliness, brotherly kindness, Lord Jesus. And then what? Love. If these things be in you and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But they that lack these things are blind. Whew. Boy, we got some blind folk out here today. But let me go finish reading this. And cannot see afar off and have forgotten that they were purged from their old sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, Moses was called and commissioned by God to be a leader. Yes, Moses. And those of you familiar, you know, with 
Moses, his life, and, you know, how he was put in the little river and how he was pulled out of the river by Pharaoh's daughter and so on and so forth and became an adopted son. Well, you know, he was called by God to be a leader and an agent of change for the nation of Israel. Matter of fact, looking at uh, Matthew 22 and 14, it says, For many are called, but only few are chosen. Many are being called today, but only a few are chosen. Those who have these principles and let's just say these characteristics, these attributes that were just mentioned in them can be used and can be effective. You don't want to be busy but not effective. You want to be effective. See, you also have been called and commissioned by God to be an agent of change. You know, it's an agent of change where in your family, in your church, on your job, your community, your government, your city. You know, it's, it's I mean, leadership is called for everywhere. We need leaders today. And I'm, if you're viewing this program, this message today, I want to let you know there's a leader in you. There is a leader in you. Yes, there's a leader in you. And it's so very important that you understand that until you can see yourself, not just as someone that can uh, make a change in the community, you can be a world changer. Mm -hmm. A world changer. Uh, you can impact the world like like Microsoft, like, uh, like uh, uh, McDonald's, like, you know, Burger King. I mean, you know, hey, there, one idea, one idea can change everything in your life. And when I'm talking about an idea, I'm talking about a good idea. Because we can pick up some things or we can run in some, let's just say, in some directions that can take us away from God's intended plan and purpose for our lives. So you really want to know, you know, what it is you're here to do. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. You have to be able to teach people. See, you know, and when you can understand that you have power and influence to teach people how to see. You have to be able to teach people how to see. How to see and believe that there's a better life mm, on the other side of whatever trouble they might be going through. I don't know what you're dealing with today. You might be dealing with a problem and you just can't see yourself moving past whatever it is, you know, you might feel you're stuck in. Well, I'm here to tell you, just open up your eyes, get your hands on the Word of God, listen to some or view some, you know, programs like this, much like you're viewing today, something that's going to encourage you, something that's going to inspire you, something that's going to let you know that, you know, there's a, there's a leader within. There's a, there's a sleeping giant on the inside waiting to come forth. What's keeping you from becoming the best version of yourself? Why are you doubting yourself when you've been through so much stuff? You have survived many a things, Lord Jesus. Think about it now. You have survived some stuff now. You know, and they tell me what don't kill you make you stronger. So, you know, without a plan or a purpose, when you fail a plan, you plan to fail. So, you know, we have to get some plans. We have to put something together. We have to be able to write some things down, write the vision and make it plain. You want to be able to, to, to stay the course or stay on course. You know, you want to be able to stay in the press because, hey, all of us are going to be squeezed. All of us going to find ourselves in some hot stuff that's designed to break you down. But I'm here to tell you today it's going to build you up. Like I said, you have survived many a trial, many a test. And you know something? You're still here. That's right. You're still here. What the devil meant for evil, God has turned it into a good. You're a little bit more wiser today. You understand what I'm saying? You're not the man, you're not the woman that you used to be, mainly because you've come through some tests, some trials, 
and you're still here. You're a winner and not a loser. See, you have to be able to see that now. I'm not here to say everything is going to be perfect, everything is going to be all right. Because no doubt some of you are going through. No doubt some of you are dealing with some issues that you just can't seem to get past. But what I'm telling you this morning or this afternoon or this evening or at the viewing of this message, hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You're about to step into your morning season. You're about to step into your change. You just have to be able to hold on and to keep on pressing for the blessing. Why? Because God got you. Mm -mm -mm. God's got you. And he, he wants you to know, if you can just keep looking unto him as the author and finisher of your faith, your faith is your life, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, you too are going to have to endure some stuff. Mm, mm, mm. If you want to make it in this life, you're going to have to endure some stuff. Don't forget now, we're living in a fallen world. If everything is not going to go the way you want it to go. Mm -mm. And the devil is busy. Thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, Genesis 3 and 8 says, now, yeah, Genesis 3 and 8 says this. God says, I am come down to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land, that land, unto a good land and a large land, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Lord Jesus. God want to bless you real good. See, he, 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 he don't want to give you that, that little something. He, he said, you, you done been down so long. You've been going through so long. It's time to expand your coast and widen your borders. I'm going to bless you real good. That's what God is saying to you today. See, so, so, so when God called Moses and gave him an assignment, what did Moses do? Moses gave God an excuse why it shouldn't be him to do the job. I, I, I can't do this, God. I'm not able to deliver the, 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 the children of Israel. I can't even deliver myself. I, I, I'm not smart enough. I'm not bright enough. I'm not big enough. I'm, I'm not strong enough. I'm, I'm going through too much stuff right now, God. Can you call me later? Uh-uh. When God calls, mm, 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 we should be responding. See, when you were saved. You didn't just make God your Savior. You had to make Him your Lord. And when the Lord is calling you, you're going to respond. And you're going to do. At least that's that's the way it's supposed to go. Now it's not going that way. You got to ask yourself, what's keeping you from doing what God is telling you to do? I'm not even saying asking you to do because if you know anything about God, you know God always want to bring the best out of us. Why? Because God put the best in us when he gave us his son. Mm, mm, mm. Gave us his son, gave us the word, gave us, ooh, uh, ooh, gave us so much. So much. Gave us a promise. You know, so it's so very important that we understand this. See, because when you look at Moses, Moses was looking at his self-imposed limitations. He, he was not looking at the God, the great God who calls him. The great God that has a plan much better than whatever it is he was wrestling with and dealing with. You see, so Moses was, was not ready to implement change as long as he was comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. See, Moses was living in an uncomfortable situation and he wasn't, he wasn't, he was, he would not be able to go to the next level. If you are making yourself, trying to make yourself comfortable in an uncomfortable situation where people are putting you down, where, you know, you're looking at the mere fact that I don't have enough education, you know, education, let me put it like that. I'm not coming with no ebonics today. But, but whatever it is that, that, that you're telling yourself that's limiting you and causing you to doubt yourself, you need to let it go. There might be some people in your life that's telling you, oh man, you might as well forget it. You know, you don't have you don't have what it takes to make that happen. Well, you need to leave them alone. Are you hearing me? Because listen, you have a big enough fight when it comes to, 
to the thoughts that you're wrestling with about yourself. So to have someone outside of yourself telling you you're not good enough, you're not going no place. See, and if God is telling you this, look what I said in that verse there. Look what I said in Genesis 3 and 8. God says, I am come down to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Egyptians. This is God's work. God's going to work in and through you. See, he has to be able to work in you and then work through you. This is God's work. And I know God not to be a failure. Are you hearing me? But if we're not doing what God is instructing us to do, and then how can the work be done? How can the work get done? You have to be able to understand that it's not by might nor by power, but only by His Spirit. Thus saith the Lord. Are you hearing me? So, so like I said, you, you, you just, you know, you, you, you have to be able to see yourself as good enough. See, God, God, God can use you to make a difference if you're able to drop these false images, ideas and plans that are, that, that are able to blow up everything. And I mean, not make it good, but make it bad. You are an amazing individual. You are an amazing individual. Matter of fact, the message I brought before this is uh, if you're viewing this, is you are special to God. You are special to God. And God can use you to be an agent of change. God can use you to bring uh, peace into a home, to bring peace on a job, to bring His peace, bring His love into a community. He can use you to be a, a world changer. You have to be able to begin to believe in yourself. You know, look, look here, look here. If God calls you, it's because you are good enough. I'm going to say that again because I don't want you to miss this. If God has called you, and I'm, let me say this right now. God has called you. And if God has called you, you are good enough. I'm speaking to you. You are good enough. Yes, 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 because it's God who's going to work through you. Present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you can change your mind, you can change the course and direction of your life. And God can use you. There's a leader in you. Are you hearing me? See, 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 you don't make yourself good enough. See, you have to realize now, we're not in the position to make ourselves good enough. It's just like me trying to, you know, like a doctor who has a, who, who, who needs a kidney, who needs an operation. He can't operate on himself. Now, he can put a bandage on the cut, <clears throat> you know, something like that. But when it comes to surgery and operations and stuff, he needs to get another doctor. Well, I'm here to tell you today, you need to follow God's lead and let God have his, have his way in your life. You're an amazing individual, and we can never make ourselves good enough to do what God has called us to do. First of all, <clears throat> let me put it like this. If you could fix yourself, you would have went to work on fixing yourself a long time ago. Because for some time now, you knew something was wrong. You knew you were somewhat off balance. You knew there was something more that needed to be added to you for you to feel right, to be right, to do right. Well, I'm here to tell you today, the bondage breaker is in the house. I'm here to tell you today, the bondage breaker is showing up at your house and he's going to help you through whatever it is you're going through. Oh, praise God. Why? Because he is the great I am. Anything and everything you want him to be and more than that. You know, Moses was called to be God's agent of change for a nation of people. For a nation of people. That's why I say you just can't think small. See, God can use you to, 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 to change a whole nation. You look at a Martin Luther King, you look at a Mother Teresa, you look at a, 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 
uh, you know, so so there's so many out there who have impacted. Hey, I'll I'll pass. Not 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 the last president, but I'm talking about the one prior to him, uh, Obama. Oh man, see we you know an agent of change, the first black president of the United States. Now, other black children or other other kids or other nationalities can say, well, ooh, maybe I can become a president now. And when we get a woman in the White House, Lord Jesus, then these young girls can begin to see themselves. Got to be able to break that ceiling, though. Got to break that ceiling. That's what Hillary Clinton was trying to do, break that ceiling and become the first woman. But so much stuff. And I'm not here to talk about politics, but I'm here to talk about change. I'm here to talk about the leader that is in you. What are you aspiring for? What are you believing God for? Well, look at this, look at this, look at this. Moses' first complaint was, 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 was uh, heard or seen in Exodus 3 and 11. And Moses said to God, here it is, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And God said, Certainly, I will be with you. In other words, God was reassuring him that he wasn't going to be by himself. He wasn't going to be by himself. God's got your back. Are you hearing me? Oh, when you take care of God's business, he'll take care of yours. Lord Jesus. And here's what he said. Certainly, I will be with you. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God on this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, This shall you say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me meaning Moses, to you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Then you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial unto all generations. Ooh, man. I mean, there was a whole lot of meat and potatoes in there. I mean, that's a full-course meal right there. But we have to be ready and prepared to serve God and know and understand that, you know, if God says you can do this, you can do this. I, I don't, you know, this, you know, all of us should be carrying some kind of a dream or a, a vision of something more than where we're at right now. And, and God wants you to know that he's going to work in you and through you. Oh, yes, this is your season for change. This is, this is a... That, that, that time in your life where you really have to be able to, to make a choice and a decision that's going to, let's just say, elevate you. Because some are, you know, they have their backs against the wall. Get, have their backs against the wall and they just don't know which way to go. They, you might feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Well, I'm here to tell you, you know, the bondage breaker, he's at your house right now. He's speaking into your heart right now and he wants you to know, mm, you can do it. You can do it, my brother. You can do it, my sister. It's not about the complaints. It's not about complaining. It's about have, exercising some God kind of faith. And see, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. See, you have to learn the voice of God. Anything that's telling you in your head that you can't do it, that's not of God. Because I can do all things, you can do all things through Christ, who have called you and commissioned you. And it's commissioned you to be an agent of change. But you have to be man enough and woman enough to know on the inside, I can do this thing. I'm that by myself. Greater is he that is in me. Matter of fact, Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. In other words, whatever it is you're lacking, whatever it is you need, God's got it, and he will provide. Why? Because he's not setting you up for failure. He's setting you up for success. He's setting you up for success. He wants you to achieve. 
He wants you to be a doer. He wants you to be an overcomer. He wants you to be a winner. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, I am have sent me to you. Tell the children of Israel that I am. What is? What does he mean by I am? I am anything and everything you want me to be and more than that. You know, we all see God in different ways, at different levels or degrees. But I'm here to tell you he's even more than that. When you think you have a handle on God, when you think you've seen, know, and understand all there is to know about God, then he opens up a, a, another box to show you that there's so much more. He opens up another space. He puts you at the dock of a bay and lets you see just how wide, how vast who he really is. There's so much more to God than what we can ever come to know and understand. And I'm here to tell you today, you, mm, there's so much more to you. And until you can step into the plan, until you can step into your purpose, until you can see, know, understand, and let me say this, and believe, you have to be able to believe in yourself. Now let me give you this now, because Moses had a second complaint. He felt un inadequate. Moses felt inadequate. So Exodus 4 and 10 says this, Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. In other words, he said, I really can't talk. Nobody going to want to listen to me. I don't even know what, I, I'm not even talking good to myself, about myself. How can I talk to a people and convince them to trust me or to follow me? That's what Mo Moses, yeah, I mean, he was full of excuses. But look at what the Lord said. So the Lord said to Moses, who made man's mouth? Or who made the mute, the deaf, the seeing? Ooh, the seeing. Oh, God. Or the blind. Have not I the Lord? Now, therefore, go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. He will teach you what you shall say. This is why the Word of God is so vitally important. You know, I'm a big, big, big advocate of that because I really do believe that as you read the Word of God, the Word of God will begin to read you and it will let you know what areas of your life you need to dress up, fix up, tighten up, need to get in line or bring in line with online with God's will. Are you hearing me? So understand now, you have to get your hands on the Bible. You have to get into a word church, get up under that word. You got to read, read, read. read. Leaders are readers. I'm going to say it again. Leaders are readers. You want to read that word and, and you know, and, and other books too. You want to, you know, understand just because you finish school or college or, you know, have your degrees and have these labels and titles, you know, we don't stop learning. That's what life's about. I mean, I really do believe, I've come to understand that life is about learning. There is so much more to learn, so much more to experience, and we can't limit ourselves by even as Christians thinking that all I'm supposed to read is just the Bible. Well, yeah, you can get off on that, and it's beautiful. But God, He has given us a great big world to experience. There's libraries full of books, all kind of subjects. And, and we need to embrace all of life, all that there is in life, all that life has to offer. And understand and know that you're going to be that someone that can lead others. You're going to be that someone that can bring change. You're going to be that someone that's going to be able to do what needs to be done to help your family, to help your job, help your church, making them what? More effective. Why? Because you're effective. As a leader, you want to be effective. You have people who are busy, but they're not effective. You want to be effective. So look, look, look at this here. Look at this here. 
So, so going to the 12th verse of uh, Exodus 4 and 12 says, so, so now therefore go and I will be with you, your mouth, and teach you what you shall say. But Moses said, oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever, whoever you want, somebody else other than myself. You may send somebody else. There's no, I just can't do this, God. I mean, you're talking about a man who has given up on himself. We're talking about a man that just mm, has himself stuffed down in a jar. And he's just sitting on a shelf, not doing anything. Mm. But God says it's time to break out that jar. It's time to become your true self. Know that you are amazing. Look at this. So what did God do? God says, okay, I just can't seem. That's why God was upset because he says, man, I mean, are you listening to me, what I'm telling you? But here Moses is so caught up in himself, he can't even hear what God is saying. So here's what God says. God says, okay. And God says, I'm going to send your brother Aaron. So Moses' brother, he, Aaron came to be with him and was to be his spokesman. Aaron was going to be his spokesman. One way or another, God's going to get you to do what he's called you to do. It's not by might nor by power, but only by his spirit. We have to be led by his spirit. So, you know, when you, when you really look at really where we're at today in our lives, this is why I think it is so vitally important that we come to the altar. You see... See, you know, God, God can alter you at that altar of change when you can come sit before him and just allow him just to, you know, just to speak into your life. Are you hearing me? This is your season for change. This is your season for change. And know and understand that the best is yet to come. Why? Because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you have to be altered at the altar of change. That's at the feet of Jesus. You know, in other words, it's like saying, I've been changed. Mm, mm, mm. See, I know my life has been changed and I'm thankful for where I'm at today. I'm thankful for this life that God has given me. But I, I, I can only hope and pray that through what was shared today, that you're going to be able to uh, step into your change. Now, let me tell you a little story before I end. There was this little eagle's egg. This this little oh, this this eagle had an egg and this you know in the nest, and this this egg rolled out of the nest and landed on a turkey farm. Landed on a turkey farm. Um, and this uh, mother turkey saw this egg. And as a mother turkey, that mother turkey said, well, let me just do what I'm used to doing. Let me sit on this egg and hatch this egg. And not knowing, you know, what was going on with it. But not knowing that it was a little eagle in that egg. But anyway, that mother hen, that mother turkey sat on that egg. And, and, and boom. Before you know it, that, that, that little eaglet came out and he was living uh, on a turkey farm with all these turkeys. And he was just, uh, I mean, he was eating with them. He was walking and talking with them. He chilled out with them. It, you know, they, they, they had special places to go on that farm and, you know, they just special spots where they can just sit and chat and talk and and then they would all go to the trough and eat and peck and peck and peck and peck and peck and until they got full and so on and so forth. But one day that little eagle that looked up in the air, looked up in the sky and saw this majestic bird flying and that majestic bird was an eagle. And he said, oh wow, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. But that eagle just kept on going. But now he then went back to doing what he was doing with his little turkey friends. And, you know, where you find turkeys, you're going to usually find chickens too. And they got wings, but they can't fly. Now here this eagle is on a farm, 
turkey farm with wings, can fly. But as this tur as this eagle beginning to grow, grow up a little bit, now becoming, you know, not an eaglet no more, but now he's becoming a little young eagle, and he's bigger, he's, you know, stronger, and so on and so forth. But because he's never challenged himself to flap his wings, he was never able to, let's just say, lead, uh, lead that turkey farm. What happened is this. An eagle, that eagle, most likely that eagle that saw him, that eagle that he saw, I should say, came back and he was flying. And what happened is when he looked up, matter of fact, the eagle looked down and said, what are you doing down here on a turkey farm? And that little eagle says, well, this is my family. This is, this is, this is where I live. This is who I am. I'm, I'm a turkey. And then that eagle said to the little junior turkey, who told you that you were turkey? Don't you know who you are? You are a eagle. Mm, mm, mm. You are an eagle. Matter of fact, he says, flap your wings. That little eagle began to flap his wings. And when he flapped his wings, his feet came up off the ground. He said, ooh, I never did this before. I never felt like this before. I had no idea I could do this. I wonder why they never taught me that. Because they didn't know how to do that. Turkeys don't know how to fly. Turkeys don't fly. Anyway, he flapped his wings. So then the big eagle said, flap your wings even harder. Flap them harder. He flapped his wings even harder. And he began to, to go higher and higher. He began to soar. And as he was flying away, the turkeys that was on the farm said, Hey, hey, man, where you going? Come on back. We don't, don't, we don't want you to go. Come on back. He said, Oh, no. I'm going to be what I was meant to be. Why? Because there was a leader in him. There is a leader in you. And you, too, have to let go of those turkeys. You have to leave the turkey farm or whatever. You got to leave those places that would limit you, that would cause you to, let's just say, stay, to just stay shackled and handcuffed, you know. <clears throat> no, you have to soar and fly off into that future that is calling you by name. Your future is calling you by name. And I want you to know you are amazing. What more do I have to say? I think I've said enough. God bless you.